Now, during the COVID pandemic, there was a guy called Klaus Schwab came to the fore. You, remember, you know Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum? And he wrote a couple of books on COVID-19 and the Great Reset. And he openly uses this kind of language. His basic argument is this. The government of Britain can take care of the British problems, and the government of France can take care of the French problems, and the government of the Netherlands can take care of the Dutch problems, but who's going to take care of our common problems? So governments can deal with local issues, but certain issues affect all of humanity, such as a pandemic or a global climate change, as they say there is, and therefore that requires a global authority to manage all of societies and to override every individual government. That's what, they're, that's what Klaus Schwab is arguing for in The Great Reset. The language he uses, and if you haven't read his book on COVID-19 and The Great Reset, please read it. These are, this is the thinking that's driving our political elites around our world today. This globalist agenda is pushing to a one-world government or a one-world authority that can bring in solutions that affect all of humanity to problems that are beyond the reach of individual governments to solve. So this is the goal of Roman Catholic political theory. Pope John Paul argued further for this. He links it to the environment. He argued for a one-world government in this particular encyclical in 1987. He argued for a one-world government for the following reasons. Number one, the moral order demands it. Number two, to manage the environment. These days you might say to fight climate change. Number three, to control multinational corporations. Number four, to end international free trade. Number five, to transfer wealth from rich to poor nations. Number six, to foster development and peace. And number seven, and this is the final compelling reason, because the papacy argues that national governments are incapable of ensuring the universal common good. Only they have the right and the ability to do that. So the next time you drive by a Catholic church, you need to think about this stuff. And there are dear souls in those Catholic churches who love the Lord and the message of Jesus to them in Revelation 18 verses 2 and 3 has come out of her, my people. They're still his people. And God has a concern for people who are trapped in this system of oppression and tyranny. He wants them to be in his kingdom of grace and love. We saw this, these ideology in the last few years. I've just picked up three dimensions of papal ideology and how they were applied in the last three years. The first claim is the papacy to unquestionable civil, religious, and economic authority. The papacy, I've given a quote there from Pope Boniface, we declare, state, define, and pronounce that it is altogether necessary to salvation for every human creature to be subject to the pontiff. And as the other popes argued, that to question the authority of the papacy is to cause division within the body of Christ. The papacy claimed authority during the pandemic. You may not have read their statements, but they were highly influential. The next thing the papacy claimed was the right to determine the universal common good as it related to certain mandates. And we see that in Progressio, Popularum Progressio, 1967. There's all rights whatsoever, including those of property and of free commerce, are to be subordinated to this principle, that is the principle of the common good. In December 2020, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, which is the papal version of the BRI and the GC, they kind of defend doctrine for the papacy, they wrote a statement called Notes on Morality of Using Some Anti-COVID-19 Vaccines. It's available online, it's a public document, and they said there, quote, the morality of vaccination depends not only on the duty to protect one's health, but also on the duty to pursue the what? The common good, which the papacy has already determined. And then Pope Francis himself issued a statement in August 21 at Vatican City, which said, vaccination is a simple but profound way of promoting the common good and caring for each other, especially the most vulnerable. I pray to God that everyone may contribute their own small grain of sand, their own small gesture of love. So here's the Pope using once again the phrase, the common good. The papacy has determined the common good. They alone have the right to determine the common good. And the common good overrides your individual conscience because the common good overrides all human rights. And this was made explicit um, in New York by the courier. They issued a statement. The papacy has the right to deny liberty of conscience or religious liberty um, uh, for, for objections by individuals to vaccine mandates. So the papacy has the right to override your liberty of conscience. And this is what the papacy said via the curia of, that's the, like the secretariat um, of the Archdiocese of New York. 
He said, Pope Francis has made it clear that it is morally acceptable to take any of the vaccines and said we have the moral responsibility to get vaccinated. Cardinal Dolan has said the same. There is no basis for a priest to issue a religious exemption to the vaccine. So the papacy, during the last three years, asserted its claim to unquestionable global authority, asserted its right to determine the common good for all of humanity, and essentially asserted that when the papacy is determined the common good, all your individual human rights are, are gone forever. They can determine what is in your good, and you're just going to have to obey. That is what the papacy did in the last three years. And without going into any great detail, they weren't the only ecclesiastical authority to make those determinations. It happened in Jewish communities, it happened in Orthodox communities, and it happened across many Protestant denominations as well. What we find in the pandemic, as we talk about Protestants, you know, they, they take the, the wine of Babylon, the doctrines of Rome. But the number one doctrine of Rome is the right of Rome to determine the common good. And pretty much every Protestant denomination went along with that. And once you accept that the Catholic Church has the right to determine the common good, which overrides all other rights and rules and laws, then you accept that if the papacy says it's in the common good to worship on Sunday, not Sabbath, you must accept that as well. There are implications for accepting the papal right to determine the common good. We need to think beyond today's news cycle and to think and realize that words have meaning. Words have consequences. Innocent looking decisions today can have profoundly terrible consequences down the line. I'm not just um, talking here about you know, that this ha happened to almost every major Protestant denomination and Orthodox groups and Jewish groups. We need to think very carefully before we start assuming and we're using in our own language concepts that relate to the common good or the good of all people overriding individual conscience. Because once you go down that path, then you know you're essentially no different to what happened in Nazi Germany.